Happy Advent season. It is wonderful to see you all here, and I know that we put this program together in a very specific way so that I will only be speaking for a few minutes. <laughs> so please, listen carefully, because what you just heard read has to do with what I believe uh, pertains to us right now. As a people who say that we are proclaiming the soon coming of Jesus, we should be very interested in who John the Baptist was. This particular piece that you have heard expertly read in front of you and which you can turn to in your pew Bible or you can get your Bible gateway out on your phone and you can look at it again, this is the piece that tells us about what happened to John's dad just as he was being born. Because you see, he had been struck dumb. Meaning, I'm not calling anybody names. I'm just saying, dumb means, can't, can't talk. My tongue can't move. Okay? That is what happened to him when he saw the angel for the first time in church. So I don't know about you, but you've come to see a wonderful program today and you have some angels up here. If you go home dumbstruck by the magnificence of your children, I will not blame you because they are absolutely fantastic. But it meant that the entire time that Elizabeth was pregnant with John, Zachariah couldn't speak. There comes time, John gets born, and it's now time to name the baby. They're going to name the baby. And of course, they think it's going to be his dad's name because that's what you did. You, you named your firstborn son after you. I had that happen to me. Uh, others have had that happen. I even did it to my daughter. It's now becoming popular to uh, give the feminine name of a man to their eldest daughter. So uh, my, my daughter, who, who dressed me today... Hi, dear. Um, <laughs> said she's happy that she's Michaela. And that's what everybody thought. This was going to be Zachariah Jr., and it was not. He gets a request. He get, makes a request for a tablet, and he writes on the tablet, his name is John. They say, this can't be. They go to the wife. You certainly know the traditions. Nope, nope, he's right. That's what his name is going to be. The angel said his name is going to be John. And at the moment that he wrote that down, his tongue was loosed. And this is what he said. Are you ready? This is, this is the amazing thing that he says. Praise be to the Lord our God of Israel because he has come. He has redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. My friends, this guy, this little guy, was going to be the one who was going to point, was going to point. That was his job. You have jobs today to do. You have people who are going to be watching you while you sing. But what if your only job was to go over there? That's him. That was John's job. His job was to point to Jesus. Now, do you see why I feel like it is so important that we get to know John today? Because we are celebrating this, this season where we want people to know that the babe that was born in Bethlehem that night, in such an, an amazing way, we, we, we didn't know that he was the king of the universe. All, all that came to worship him were shepherds, the, the most low people on the economic totem pole. It's only later on, as, as, as you will read, when Jesus was much older, that the magi, the kings from the east, made it to the, the little place where Joseph and Mary had set up shop. You realize that that is why Herod, kids, close your ears, you shouldn't hear this. 
That's why Herod said, every little boy to and under. Because they had been in, in Bethlehem for two years. So don't think that what we do at Christmas time where we compress all the events into one small period of time. It was not a small period of time. They stayed and they worked and, and Joseph tried to get work in that area. And you know how hard it is to try and get work sometime. And he's supporting his young family knowing, of course, that this is the child of promise. And it's only then that the economic advantage arrives in the form of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These were things that not only befitted a king, but also provided these two people their economic financing for what? For running away to Egypt. That's what they did next. They ran away to Egypt and they had to survive somehow. And I would not doubt that that is what they survived on was what the kings gave them in order to make it through life. So we need to know who John is because, my friends, I certainly believe that in this day and age, right now, that there is a people, maybe it's you, I know it's me, that has accepted the opportunity that God is putting forward to call the entire world to a knowledge of the saving God, the one who has a plan, the one who has interest in all humanity, the one who, who wants every boy and girl, mom, dad, uncle, auntie, grandparent, to know how much he loves them. And that job is just like the job that John had. It's simply to point to Jesus. You need help? You need salvation? You need a whole new life? There is only one who can provide that for you. His, his name is Jesus. Uh, you read on in, 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 in what is now called the Nunc Dimittis. Yes, it's a Latin phrase. doesn't matter a huge amount. But he says this. He has salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant that he swore to our father Abraham. How many of you believe this morning that you are sons and daughters, spiritual sons and daughters of Abraham? I hope you do because you are. If you believe in Jesus, the son of David, who was born in the house of David, then you are part of the family of God that he has made a covenant with and that covenant with is, I want you back. I want you to come home with me. I don't want you to be in this, this rebellious world anymore that thinks that it can give you a great time in life, but which disappoints you every single time you turn to it. And you, my child, now, now he's talking directly to his firstborn son, John. You, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of sins. My friends, if there was ever a job description that I would like to have and that I would love for all of us to make our own, it would be that we were interested in telling people about the knowledge of salvation through the gift of God known as Jesus Christ. When better, when better can we do this than at Christmas time? Now, you might say, well, Easter? Yeah, sure. That's the other bookend of Jesus' life. And so that is why you see around the world that these two are the times when the faith that we call Christian has the biggest opportunity ever to tell people the story, to be just like John. I want to be like John. I want to be like John. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting life, though, to be a prophet. Where do we see that he goes? If you, read, if you heard the last, the very last verse, verse 80, and the child grew and became strong in the spirit and lived where? In Santa Clarita. He lived in the desert. Oh, well, maybe we need to go to Lancaster for that, right? I don't know. But this is not the most lush green place. Hey, with the rain we just had, maybe it's going to be more green on the hills for a little bit. 
but just now it's going to be 115 again and we're going to feel like we live in the desert, right? And the child grew and became strong in spirit and he lived in the desert and he appeared publicly to Israel. Jumping forward, we know that when Jesus came to be baptized at the River Jordan, it was to John that he came. Hence, we call him John the Baptist. We practice baptism by immersion. That's what this square piece is here. If you come up, you can see that it's a, it's a big watery tank. And when we baptize people, this is what we're doing. We're doing this baptism thing just like Jesus did, and he had John baptize him. And here he's having his cousin, by the way, this is, this is Jesus' cousin, baptize him. And John says, no, no, I, I, I'm, I'm not... I'm not fit to baptize you. You should baptize me. And Jesus says, no. No, we need to do everything by the book here, John. And this is, this is needful. And so John says, okay. And so he, he lowers Jesus down. And as he brings him up out of the water, there is a dove. People see a dove. in the. It's the Holy Spirit, my friends. Let me just, let me just cut to the chase here. We don't have much time. It's the Holy Spirit landing on Jesus. And you hear this, this thunder, the people who didn't really understand, but it's the voice of God. And he's saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus had grown up all his life. If you, if you want to hear, if you want to read, uh, uh, there's a chapter in a, a, a really good book called Desire of Ages, and, and, it, and it talks about the hidden years the time between when Jesus was bar mitzvahed and this moment. The time when he, he comes out and is now ready to do his ministry. He's now 30 years old. This is a big piece of, of Jesus' life that we know nothing about, except that he increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man, Luke 2.52, which I learned when I was their age. So thank you, moms and dads, who are teaching their kids scripture. Jesus Jesus comes up out of the water and God puts his seal of approval upon him just as he is going out into the world to be tempted by the devil. That's what he does next, 40 days in the wilderness. You see, John played this amazing role and guess what? I believe God is calling us to play that same role right now in Santa Clarita in 2018 going on 19. Let's, let's, let's just say it. We, we, we crunch it down. 2018. Let's just say it right. 2,018 years ago, Jesus died, was buried, and was resurrected. My friends, he is the path of peace. He is the one who reconnects us. And John's job was to say, here he is. Here he is. This is our salvation. And here you can feel it in how his father sings about what he has given us through John. Do you know that the God of heaven sings over us as well as we go about telling the world of the salvation that is here already? Our father sings over us and he says, I am so proud of you. I am so happy. Please stay close to me. The Holy Spirit is going to lead and guide you. And as you do these things, more and more and more of my children will know how much I love them. I pray that this is your passion this Christmas, that you feel like the gift, the best gift that you can give anyone in your family, anyone in your community, the best gift that you can give them is to put them on the path of peace, put them in connection with the one who can save them. Would that not be just the best ever to have more people who would be giving praise like Zechariah, who would be giving praise like our Heavenly Father? I think that would be just the best. Now we're going to do a, a, a nice little play for you, and I'm going to say it's going to have lots of wonderful things in it, but here's going to be the part that you play at the end. You will have an opportunity to do this offering thing that Pete ta talked to you about. I want you to know that that uh, first of all, I'm thank you to Amy Hinkle who made the beautiful envelopes and also to those who think about what we are going to be doing in the next year. And I want you to know the ministry of this church is your ministry. 
It's your ministry. And so funding that is, is what this is all about. You see the families. You see the kids here. And I'm telling you, uh, my friends, Jesus is the one who said, suffer the little children to come unto me. So thank you, parents. Thank you, grandparents, for listening to him and bringing your kids to where they can learn about Jesus. Thank you for that. Thank you for trusting us with that. At the end, when there's a beautiful song going to be sung by Hannah, when she has sung the first verse of that song, I want you to get up as families, and I want you to bring those envelopes forward, and we're going to stand here together, shoulder to shoulder with our kids, and we're going to sing joy to the world. The Lord is come. My friends, this is the message. This is the message that will put people in connection with God and will help them to know that if they are on the path of peace, that there is salvation not only in this life, but that there is an eternal life that never ends, that never, never ends, where death is no more, where separation is no more, where we're together with our families forever. Come on now. I'm way far away from my family. Are you way far away from your? I can't wait for the day when I don't have to be far from my family. How about you? Some of you, your family has already gone ahead of you in death, and you can't get together with them. How about the day when you're back together with them? Yes? How about the day when, when there's nothing that can separate you? That's, that's the good news. That's the news of Christmas. Now, Let's be like John and get them on the path of peace. Amen?